Saskatoon's three business improvement districts joined forces to host Saskatoon's living legend, Henry Wolfe, as part of the Artists in the Community program. Under the name of the Cultural Crescent, their goal was to energize the three central communities of Saskatoon and to encourage cultural capital in their districts. Wow! We had, uh, for some time, been working on, on what sets the center of the city apart from, from the suburbs and the exurbs and the big box retail. How do, how do we carve our niche out? And of course, the thing that we came to rather quickly was that uh, the old architecture, the heritage, the, the streets, uh, the urban forest are things that we have here that they don't have anywhere else in the city. So we go back three or four years and when the Cultural Capitals project came along, uh, it gave us an opportunity to uh, access getting some inventory, uh, focusing on those activities and connecting the three traditional business areas of downtown Riversdale and Broadway in some kind of cohesive fashion. Uh, the Cultural Crescent is the collective area of downtown Broadway and Riversdale. Uh, in that space, there's a recognition of a large majority of the cultural Aussie. The Cultural Crescent is the collective area encompassing Broadway, Downtown and Riversdale, the three historic business districts in which a large majority of the city's uh, cultural assets and amenities and arts-based activity currently takes place. What? The artist in the artisan community program fit so well with, with what we were trying to accomplish which was to involve as many people in, in the cultural activity and in, in the core of the city as possible. A North American trend, probably a world trend, is that cultural tourism is really uh, at an all-time high. They're, the people that are, that are touring and out and about are looking for cultural activity. <laughs> it's strange, but I mean, we're a business improvement district and, and what we're about is getting more businesses, but also keeping the businesses we have healthy and vibrant, and how do you do that? By delivering people that get the opportunity to shop there. So if you have cultural amenity and people are attracted to it, you automatically receive a benefit in business. Your restaurants do better, your clothiers, your, just everybody that's in the retail and service business does better because you've attracted more people downtown. I think having, uh, having that relationship with the artists is an integral part of Broadway and certainly uh, has helped to create the character of the district that people now love and enjoy on a regular basis. It's a fact that businesses are attracted to places where there is art and the funny thing is if you have a residential area where there are artists like um, around Broadway immediately property values go up so there is an economic basis for liking art too. And we, and we want to celebrate what we have here. We want to um, help to recreate those connections between the artistic, the creative, the, techno the technology communities and our local businesses. Uh, well, we invite artists to participate in our activities in a variety of ways. A uh, number of events throughout the calendar year include the Broadway Art Encounter. We also have live performance space where we do host uh, live music out in the Broadway area. We have uh, the Fringe Festival, obviously a, a popular uh, and well-known highlight on our summer events calendar. Um, also, we have the Broadway Street Fair that comes up in September. And then come uh, December, we celebrate the Christmas season, the holiday season around on Broadway, and we get as many people involved there too. Hosting festivals and events, obviously, is one way. And the other one is to have as many of your cultural amenities downtown as you can have, or, or conversely, recognizing the cultural amenities that you do have downtown. It, it's absolutely enriches our lives. It enriches my life. I mean, for me, and I, I can speak for myself better than I can speak for anybody else, I love every minute of it. I love being able to go and, and uh, you know, walk down and, and watch a movie and, and stop at a, a show at AKA or, or I, I, I'm just thrilled that we have those, those venues and those opportunities right here in our own community. It is often said in Saskatoon, you've got to have culture because that attracts business and people want to set up their offices here if their employees are in a nice cultural atmosphere. That's perfectly true, but it isn't the best reason for having culture. In Anglophone Canada, culture has often been 
the poor relation. But gradually, the idea is seeping through that culture isn't just a fancy word for an elite group, or not just some kind of activity socially that attracts business and makes the economy better, that culture is part of life, and that art, instead of being an elitist world, well, living without art is like living in a house without windows. You can't see out and no light will come in. The three business improvement districts, the partners in the Crescent Project, were very excited to have an opportunity to bring um, an artist in residence to the Crescent. Animating the district is a really important piece of the puzzle, and whether that animation takes place within the individual businesses or in the public realm, uh, those areas that connect the businesses and connect the different districts, that was something that we really wanted our artists to, to talk about. We, uh, we were certainly lucky to have Henry Wolf uh, be granted to us as our artist in residence, and he's been very busy. We took on something a little different in, in that we took on a writer, Henry Wolf, a well-known playwright, actor and director in Saskatoon, and asked him to just sort of get involved and he did uh, poetry readings and poetry writing sessions and has written a couple of plays. Working with Henry has, has just been an amazing process. He is, he's been, anima been able to animate these three districts in a, in a, a way or, or to an extent that we, that we never really expected to see. My role is really to stimulate or encourage or activate artistic activity of all sorts in that cultural crescent. It lets you know what's what, what kind of plans it's got. And sure, you can sit, but you're just better fit. Or you'll be out of there, you can't fool a chair. So, if your heart's not in it, Best not begin it, make for the door. Run for a mile, never turn around and see that chair smile. But if your feelings are right, and it's love at first sight, then it'll put its arms around you, glad to have found you, and your thoughts will run happily day after day, so long as you learn how to love how to honor, and above all, how to obey. So be careful, be careful, watch out, beware. If you once catch the eye of a, an affectionate chair, <laughs> you think they can't speak? <laughs> oh yeah, they can, I heard them. Oh yeah, I have, I've heard them. In whispers, they speak in whispers, you know. And at night, they like to speak at night. You know, oh, it's not, no, 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 it's not English. They don't speak English. They don't speak French. They don't speak German. They speak chair. That's what they speak. Um, have I got used to it? No. Does it scare me? Yes. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because they only whisper when something's wrong, when I've done something. That's right. You know. There's nothing more alarming than to wake up in the morning and find the rocking chair is over by the wall and you left it by the bed. Or see the kitchen chair has moved to the window. It's kind of alarming, you know you've done something and you don't know quite what. And like, once, sometimes you do, sometimes you know what you've done. Like, I had a few one night and I stubbed a cigarette out in the arm of the recliner and uh, there was whispering all night. When I woke up, they were all staring out the window with their backs to me. Nervous making, nervous making. Lately it's got worse, you know. Even though I try to make it up to them, you know. You know what I do? I, I polish them, I polish them, I polish them. I, I, I buy cushions, little bright cushions. I scatter them about. I hoover, I vacuum the armchairs. I do everything I can to placate them, but you know what? I think they've written me off. I do, I think they've written me off as a bad job. Kind of useless. When I woke up this morning, they were standing around the bed just watching me.
As you know, the Broadway area certainly has a unique and individual character that is different from that of downtown, which is different again from that in Riversdale. So uh, the challenge to highlight and emphasize the strengths and the uniqueness of each of those three districts, while at the same time creating some programming and some um, vital connection between those three districts is, is largely what Henry was charged with. Henry's focused his uh, energy in, in three different areas. Uh, first and foremost was animation of the spontaneous kind. Um, when people come to performance venues like Lydia's where they expect to see live music or the off-Broadway dinner theater, they expect that they're going to a performance venue. Um, that kind of expectation, we wanted to surprise people uh, that didn't otherwise have that expectation, the public space. So Henry did a lot of work with uh, local emerging artists, performance artists, um, and facilitated some impromptu busking sessions throughout Broadway, downtown and Riversdale. Here on Broadway, uh, we are going to be celebrating the renaming of the Little Stone stage, which is uh, an actual uh, space right on the corner of Broadway and 11th Street, marking the original site of Saskatoon's first educational institution. Uh, that building, which now resides on the University of Saskatchewan campus, was called the Littlestone Schoolhouse. And uh, we've created a stage to, to commemorate that space and to tell the story of, of that school. So Henry's going to uh, put together a play um, inviting the students from Victoria School to actually be the actors and the actresses in the show uh, to, tell, to help us tell that story to the community. myself. I'd like you to spell for me, please, the simple word up. U-P. I beg you. <laughs> in Riversdale in particular, Henry focused on including in as many people in the conversation and a dialogue about art as possible. He had, uh, every Wednesday afternoon during this process, he had a, a coffee house at the Park Cafe where he invited people just to come and sit down and, and talk about their interests, about, about the role that art and creativity plays in, in their lives. They, we've been running for weeks. We meet every Wednesday from 3 to 5 at the Park Cafe, an excellent restaurant on 20th Street and Avenue E. They're very hospitable there and the food is first class the most brilliant apple pie and eggs benedict I've ever had. He also wrote a, a series of vignettes on the history of, of Riversdale and, and how, um, how the stories and, and the people and the experiences of Riversdale have, have made it what it is today. What Henry was able to do was, was look at the stories and, and certainly with artistic license, he, he was able to write some entertaining, I, I mean, they were, he, he spoke to some serious issues, but perhaps in a more entertaining fashion and, and in a lighter fashion with Riversdale Follies. You can do what you like in Riversdale. You can ride your own bike in Riversdale. You can run and She's dressed up like a chintzy two-bit naughty girl. <laughs> but she's good and kind. Oh boy, what a find. But if ancestors knew, they'd maybe lose their mind. Overeating, <laughs> overdrinking, and wondering about people's naughty bits. <laughs> I used to be a tall, fair man until I gave up smoking, drinking, and helping young ladies get on in the theater. <laughs> My motto is pure thoughts and deep breathing. My motto is I eat, therefore I am. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I calculate that if everyone shrank by 1.642 percentile per annum, by the year 2096 and a half, the global consumption of food, water, and chewing gum would diminish by half a mini cream. Then I calculate that if everyone shrank by 1.642 percent, there would be more for me. <laughs> what I liked about when I was artistic director of Shakespeare in Saskatchewan, we used to say art is in everyone and art is for everyone. There's no need to dress up. It isn't an elitist activity. It's for you and you have art in yourself and it makes you happy. You don't even have to use a big word like enriches your life. No, it makes you happy to express yourself. It makes you happy to see other people expressing themselves and what, how they express themselves enriches your life. So it's a win-win situation and I'm delighted if it helps business. And business has been very generous to art. I think they realize that happy clients and happy customers spend more. Broadway has a long-standing relationship with the artists and to this day is a, is a place where we welcome artists to come uh, and to thrive and to share their creativity. Uh, a number of our businesses currently um, incorporate art in various uh, shapes and sizes into their businesses, not to mention uh, those businesses which uh, are arts-based themselves, the performance arts venues, the live music spaces, um, and obviously we've got outdoor performances that happen when the weather allows also. So a, a solid relationship uh, with the artists, certainly. I think that, I mean, we've always had a strong involvement. We've, we've sponsored Jazz Festival and Shakespeare in the Saskatchewan and uh, other events to the extent that we can and have certainly tried to, to engage business in, in, those, in those experiences. Um, I think that what has come out of it and what will come out of it and continue on is an appreciation of the asset that we have in Saskatoon, both the human asset in, in talented people but also the, the solid asset of, of uh, you know, sculptures that are, that are in our downtown, uh, works of art that we see. We've seen a flourish of galleries and uh, those kinds of amenities spring up in downtown. Uh, those, those are going to be lasting effects. Uh, they were just starting to get going before the Cultural Capitals Project and uh, the artists in the community programs. But I think now that they have the strength uh, to keep on going, and it, it, it has been a very nice uh, evolution uh, that has happened to us, that people are appreciating what we've got and, and recognizing it. It attracts other people to come back to this area and, and to um, rediscover how genuine the culture is and, and how, how rich the, the artistic culture of this area is. It's really important for people to remember that it always has been. I mean, those, those are things that, that we have always had, that we have never lost. The fact that Saskatoon and Saskatchewan are so filled with artists, sometimes you can't turn a corner without bumping into a musician or a poet or a painter or a sculptor or an actor. The re it isn't an accident because of the hard work over the years of something like the Saskatchewan Arts Board, which was the first arts board in Canada, by the way, and the Saskatchewan Musical Education Association that have made art a vital part of Saskatchewan life. The fact is there are more musicians and artists here than any other place I've been per capita. And I've lived in Paris and London and New York, and it's true and it just enriches people's lives but one mustn't wrap it up into elitist a framework of words because people will shy away from it. I just wanted to say it's marvelous to publicize art because it makes people happy but we have to find another word for it so I suggested the other night that the Saskatchewan Arts Board change its name to the Saskatchewan Fun Board because art is fun. <laughs> <laughs>